بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي امين يا رب Even though I'm very tired today but I'm going to talk about this very important topic today which is غزوه الهند and شام A lot of people have been asking me about the authenticity of the hadith that has to do with غزوه الهند I want to do a whole lecture on that but I want to make it absolutely clear even before touching that 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 not only is that authentic in terms of hadith and i will show that to you and show you even the scholars that considered it authentic in the past and uh, which is why why you know if you read uh, uh, you know badaya uh, nihaya by imam kathir he will he talks about people that specifically went towards hind uh, starting you know even be, before muhammad bin qasim or even after muhammad bin qasim people that went towards hind to be part of that hadith to be part of the people that are going to be part of that hadith now because hadith is a very technical subject i want to leave that for later because for the next 10 days i'm going to kind of like be on a vacation with my family so i want to leave it with except for today's topic maybe leave it more or less on uh, topics that are not as technical okay because with hadith literature you have to gather them and you have to do a lot of things to prepare that type of conversation and that type of discourse but i will mention that even if even if even if the hadith about ghazwat uh, al-hind were weak and even if they were not directly or indirectly mentioned in Quran which it is as you will see today it'll be just so clear to you just like oh it's in the Quran it'll be so clear to you today that the the hadith question is not even a a a really a, that uh it's it's a supporting evidence to the Quran itself um now uh what i want to share with you is there are many ahadis many many uh at least that i can gather that are ranging from being authentic to not so authentic but there's a range of many many ahadith uh starting with the general now remember this is my those people that listen to me know that i always start with the idea of you start with the general and then break down to the specific so we know there will be a ghazwa on the whole world in the sense that the whole world will accept islam You know, I know the subject I was going to talk about was Quran, but about hadith I want to make this clear. You know, the hadith in which the prophet said zuya li ma fil ard faraitu masharika wa maghribaha wa inna ummati sayablighu ma zuya li minha that Allah showed me the east and the west and my umma will take over whatever Allah saw of the east and the west. This hadith is authentic. So it's about the whole global world, okay? Number two, uh the hadith لا يبقى على ظهر الأرض بيت مدر ولا دبر إلا أدخل الله في كلمة الإسلام. The hadith continues. There will be not a single house on earth either made of bricks or a camels uh, made of camel skin. Houses made of camel skin or uh, bricks, except Allah will enter Islam into it. Okay. Another hadith, which is the long hadith about which talks about the five periods of the Muslim history. right that again ends with khilafa ala min haj al nabuwa right those five periods ends with which means that islam will be global so when we have that uh, framework hind works under that framework and sham works under that framework which you will find in bani israil both of them and they're connected with tul kahf as i will explain in a second now when you have ahadith that are ranging from authentic to several weak ahadith or ahadith that are in the middle to being weak when you combine them together you get something authentic if you have something in quran something you can see it in the quran and then you have a hadith that's daif or in the middle like hasan or authentic whatever that position is and there are few of them when you combine them together and put it with quran it becomes supporting evidence that yes this is going to happen and uh the statement that uh these types of you know uh ahadith were just made up 
because of the political situation, so on and so forth. It doesn't add up when you look at it through the eyes of Quran. So we have to understand things from the eyes of Quran first, then we will look at the ahadith. I will do that hadith uh, lecture um, in about, you know, two weeks or so. Okay, but for that, until that time period, you will have this now framework that I'm going to give you with Quran. Now, before I actually show you the Quran, let me actually discuss what I'm going to show you in the Quran. You see, Surah Al-Kahf is the surah that deals with Dajjal. And Surah Al-Kahf, now there's another very important point, which is the surahs in Quran, they're in pairs. I'll give you a few examples of that. I've done this before, but I want this to be clear, crystal clear, so it is clear to you, and then you understand this. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran come together, and the Prophet gave it the name of Zahrawain, two lights. Why? One of the reasons is Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran are like a pair. Surah Al-Baqarah talks is talking to the Jewish community. Surah Al-Imran is talking to the Christian community. Jewish people, when they are intellectuals, they like looking at history and what happened and events that happened that you get in Surah Al-Baqarah because it's talking to the Jewish community. Christians, they like parables and examples, like the example of Jesus is like Adam. Remember this uh, verse that's very popular. Uh, uh, the example of Isa is like the Kamathali Adam, right? Uh, Allah says, be and it is. And so... Christians like to use parables and analogies. Allah uses parables and analogies in Surah Al-Imran. And Allah uses history in Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, Allah talks to the Jews in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah talks to the Christians in Surah Al-Imran. Okay, so the, in the first half, Allah is talking to the, the Jews and then to the Muslim Ummah. The same thing here. The, over here, right in the middle of Surah Al-Baqarah is the change of Qibla. Right? And the Qibla changes from Jerusalem to um, Mecca. Now that the Qibla has changed... The discussion talks with is with the Muslims. Okay, so the Al Imran, same thing. The discussion starts with the Christians. Okay, mostly the Christians, and then uh, after that, the discussion is Ya Yuhaladina Amanu Taqulah. It starts with the believers till the end. Okay, starting with Ya Yuhaladina Amanu Taqulah Katuqati Wala Tamutuna Illa Wa Antum Muslimun. All you people who believe, Taqulah fear Allah as you ought to fear Allah. Okay, ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون and don't die except you become Muslims and it ends with يا أيها الذين آمنوا صبروا وصابروا ورابط واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون so that I so this last portion of Al Imran and the last portion of Surah Al Baqarah talking to the Muslim Ummah another example Surah Al Falak and Surah Al Nas right these are Muawiyah Zatayn the Prophet called it right Surah Al Falak is talking about the external evil. So the Nas is talking about the internal evil, okay? In the same way, you have Sutul Rahman and Sutul Waqiya, Sutul Mudassir and Sutul Muzammil, okay? Uh, you have all these examples of pairings in Quran. Now, let's understand the pairing between Sutul Kahf and Sutul Isra, or Bani Israel. Sutul Isra starts with Subhanalladhi Asra bi Abdihi. Subhanallah, perfect is Allah who took up his servant. So the Kahf starts with Alhamdulillah Hilladi Anzala ala Abdihi. Alhamdulillah, all gratitude is for Allah who brought down the book. Okay? So this is then Abdihi Abdihi. So Subhanallah Asrabi Abdihi Alhamdulillah Hilladi Anzala ala Abdihi. You see you so you see this pairing between the Kahf and Sutil Isra. So even though the Prophet pointed, Sutil Kahf will be what you should be reading every Friday to protect yourself from, from the Dajjal. Why? Because it talks about the Ummah, the problems of the Ummah. What we will be, the way our eyesight will be distorted. We won't be able to see reality. We will only be seeing appearances of things. But the external aspects of that Dajjal, the external aspects of that uh, deception are actually mentioned in Surah Al-Bani Israel and Surah Al-Isra. And so these two surahs, you also find, for example, I'll give you some more examples. Uh, you find the length of the su both surahs are almost equal. Surah Al-Isra ends with saying, Kuli Alhamdulillah, say Alhamdulillah. Then Surah Al-Kahf starts with Alhamdulillah. You also find the word Fasad being used similarly. Inna ya'ajuja wal ma'ajuja mufsiduna fil ard, over there in Surah Al-Kahf. 
then to the Bani Israel you see uh, um, uh, بني لا تفسدن في الأرض مرتين ولا تعلن علوا كبير يا بني إسرائيل لا تفسدن في الأرض same similar wordings okay for the word فساد over there for the Jewish people over there for يعجوج and معجوج so you can connect the two okay so now the point is سوت الأمراء سوت الإسراء and سوت الكهف are interlinked and Sutul Kahab tells us our internal issues. And Sutul Bani Israel tells us our external issues. Now, what are the external issues that are mentioned in Sutul? Okay, now, over here, let me show, show you something very, very interesting. One of the biggest translational errors that have occurred in the Quran are in Sutul Kahab. But let me show you other places where this particular word that we're going to look at is used and how it's used. So that it's very, very clear what I'm saying. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا All gratitude is for Allah who sent down the book upon his servant. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ إِعْوَجَةً There is no crookedness in this. There's no, there's no puzzles. It's going to tell you straight what is the matter that needs to be dealt with. قَيِّمًا لِيُنْذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدٌ Straight up! قَيِّمًا لِيُنْذِرَ To warn you of بَأْسًا شَدِيدٌ بَأْسًا شَدِيدٌ Remember this word. بَأْسًا شَدِيدٌ Of a great war. Now the translations usually say great punishment. But I will show you where the word Ba's and Ba's and Shadidan is used in Quran to mean war. In other places in Quran, let's look at one of them. One of them is in its twin surah, Sutul Bani Israel. So let me show that to you, okay? First, let me show that to you. Uh, okay, there we go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْضُ أُولَاهُمَا When the first of those promises come, Allah says, about Bani Israel, when it happened to them. بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ إِبَادًا لَنَا We sent against you our servants. The Assyrians came from the north. Okay, and then others came later. But this is talking about the Assyrians and, you know, the Babylonians and all that. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْضُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ إِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِي بَعْسٍ شَدِيدٍ Ba'sin Shadid. We sent against you our servants of ours, those of great military might. Fajasu Khilal al Diyar, they even entered your houses. Wakana wa'adam maf'ula. This was a promise that was going to happen. So Ba'sin Shadid, great military might. You also find this in Surah Al Baqarah, in Ayat Al Bir, in the end. وَقَامُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ وَالْمُفُونَ بِأَحْدِيمِ إِذَا أَحَدُوا وَالصَّابِرِينَ And those who have sabr. فِي الْبَعْصَاءِ وَالْدَرَّاءِ In بَعْص In بَعْصَاءِ وَالْدَرَّاءِ وَهِينَ الْبَعْص And at the time of war. And you can see the translation just so that you're absolutely clear with me on this. Okay. And hardship and during the battle okay so ba'san shadid or the word ba's is used for generally war okay so surah al-kahf starts with qayyiman liyundira ba'san shadidan min ladunhu warning of a great war that will be coming from him and this is, because it's referring to the internal, it is referring to a warning to the Ummah. But externally it mentions in Sutil Bani Israel what? That every single city that either will be destroyed or punished severely. In Qaryatin, there will be not any village, any city left, illa, except we will destroy it. أو يعذبها ذاب اليوم قبل يوم القيامة before we punish it or destroy it before the day of judgment. That's the Bani Israel, which is the surah preceding Sutul Kahf, the twin surah. Now, Allah talks about a great warning to the Ummah. 
and the twin surah is Surah Al-Bani Israel. Which two groups does Allah refer to in this surah? In the first half of this surah, Allah is talking to Bani Israel starting with this ayah. Uh, sorry. Starting with this ayah here. وَقَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And we made a qada, we made an, uh, we made an, an effective order. Okay, we made a commandment. وَقَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ It was written in the book. لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ You will cause corruption in the world twice. وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عَلُوًّا كَبِيرًا So this is the first group. And then the second group. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts that by saying, so starting from ayah number 40 or 42, starts with Bani Israel, and then starting with ayah number 42 or 40, depending upon how you look at it. Because so, so the ayah 40 kind of combines the two together, brings the two, like, fit, inter, interlocks them two, because it's talking, it ends with the Ten Commandments, and the last is, don't make partners to Allah. And then immediately after that, it talks about the pagans. And this start, one of those first verses is right here. قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا كَمَا يَقُولُونَ If there was anyone with Allah as they say, إِذَنْ لَبْتَغَوْا إِلَىٰ إِذَنْ إِلَىٰ ذِي الْعَرْشِ سَبِيلًا They would have tried to find a way to the arsh of Allah. If there were all these gods... So it's talking about the pagans. And then it continues to talk about the pagan people. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yakulun aluwan kabira. Right? And tusabbihu lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al tusabbihu lahu ma fi tusabbihu lahu lahu samawati sab'u wal ard wa man fi hinna. And then it goes on talking about tawheed and against. Uh, the people who make shirk with Allah. So two groups are mentioned, okay? So, and it goes all the way till uh, ayah number uh, 47. So now two groups are mentioned in Surah Al-Isra. The Jews, Bani Israel, and the pagans. These are the two groups. In which surah? Surah Al-Bani Israel. Now you'll notice that Kahafs talks about the Christian group, which is indirectly also mentioned in the surah, but that has to do with something different. That The rules of that we will cover later. But this surah is talking about, the Surah Al-Kahf is the internal, pro, it was the internal effect of Christianity on the Muslim world. That Surah Al-Kahf mentions the Christians. But the external enemies are going to be Bani Israel and the pagans. There's another connection that makes this even more clear, and that is the very first ayah. Now notice how Allah mentions this. There are two surahs in Quran that talk about Isra wal Miraj. This surah talks about Isra, and it's mostly about Bani Israel. And the Miraj is mentioned in Surah Al-Najm. Now, just to show you the similarity, just so you can appreciate this. Ayah number one says, Subhanal ladhi asra bi abdihi layla min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min, min, remember this, li nuriyahu min ayatina. So we will show you our signs. We gave you this trip. So we will give you our signs. So we gave you this trip. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Najm what? Now look at this. Two surahs talking about the Isra wal Mi'raj. Interestingly enough, Surah Al-Isra talks about the Bani Israel and then the pagans. Okay? But this connection is there this way within the surah and in its relationship with Surah Al-Kahf and Surah Bani Israel, but there's another relationship, two surahs that talk about Isra wal Miraj. One is referring to Bani Israel, and the other surah that talks about Isra wal Miraj is Surah Najm. And see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions over here, remember, 
So we will show him our signs, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah is now showing you his signs. Okay, Allah says, مَا ظَلَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى وَمَا يَنْتِكُ عَنِ الْحَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوهَا عَلَّمَهُ شَدِيدُ الْقُوَى ذُو مِرَّةٍ فَاسْتَوَى So this is referring to Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Right? He was ذُو مِرَّةٍ He was one of possessing of great beauty and power فَاسْتَوَى وَهُوَ بِالْأُفُقِ الْأَعْلَى Right? And he was at the highest horizon or you can say and then thumma dana fatadalla and then he approached the prophet coming down fakana qaba qawsayni aw adna he was closer to the prophet than the length of a bow okay fa awha ila abdihi ma awha and we gave our servant the revelation what we were going to we were going to whatever we were revealing to him we were revealing to him وَمَا مَا كَذَبَ الْفُؤَادُ مَا رَعَى His heart didn't deny what he saw. His heart was not wrong in what it saw. Actually, the word fuad, I take it more as mind. So his mind didn't get deceived in what he was seeing. أَفَتَمَارُونَهُ عَلَى مَا يَرَى You want to doubt him about what he saw? وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةَ الْأُخْرَى Allah says, he even saw him a second time. In the Sidrat al-Muntaha. With, where in Sidrat al-Muntaha, he saw him a second time, right? In the Jannat al-Ma'wa, in Jannat al-Ma'wa, he saw him. إِذْ يَخْشَ السِّدْرَةُ مَا يَخْشَ مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا تَغَى And whatever the Prophet saw, his eyes didn't deviate, right? And they didn't transgress. They didn't look, you know, they, they kept the adab. لَقَدْ رَأَى مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْكُبْرَى Ayat of Allah al-Kubra. The ayat of Allah kubra the big signs of Allah. Over there, Subhan al-Lazi Asra bi Abdihi, Layla min al-Masjid al-Haram ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa, Al-Ladhi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min ayatina. So we'll show you of our signs. And that was referring to Bani Israel. And over here, so we showed him our signs. But this surah is talking about what? Afara'aytumu al-Lata wal-Uzza. Did you see, did you ever think about Lat and Uzza, these pagan people? What are they doing? Right? وَمَنَاتُ الثَّالِثَةُ الْأُخْرَى And the manat, manat, that is the third of their idols, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, there's another correlation between the two surahs. I'm just going to point this out, I'm not going to actually show you the verses. So the Najm and the Bani Israel both talk about this. And that is the making of angels into females. Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in, uh, about the idols, In hiya illa asma'un sammaytuha antum wa aba'ukum ma anzal Allahu biha min sultan. These are just names that you've named and your forefathers have named and Allah has revealed no authority for such a thing. إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا ظَنْ You just follow your dhan, your ideas, your conjecture, your guesswork. وَمَا تَحْوُلْ anfus And whatever your heart wills, you just follow that. Right? And uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, very interesting. Here is the ayah, 27. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ Those people don't believe in the next life. What do they do? لا يسمون الملائكة تسمية الأنثى. They give the angels female names. Now, if you look at سورة بني إسرائيل, it says the exact same thing. Let me very quickly, inshallah, تعالى get there. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says here. Over here about the do the angels being females. أَفَأَسْفَاكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِالْبَنِينَ Oh, you want Allah to give you sons? وَاتَّخَذَ مَلَائِكَةَ الْأُنْثَى When you say angels, the malaika, the angels are the daughters of Allah? Ayah number 40. Talking about the mushrikeen. Both surahs connected by the event of Mi'raj. And both are talking about pagans. And both have many similarities, including one of them that I just showed you about calling what the angels, 
with fe as females. Okay? Then let me now show you another connection that you might find interesting. Okay. Allahu Akbar. Kaf starts with so we will warn you of a great punishment, a great terrible war that's coming. And over here in ayah number 58 of Sutul Bani Israel, the same subject except in the external world. There is not a single city illa nahnu. We ourselves, Allah says the word nahnu, we with our full Jalal, and our full Kamal, and our full Izzah. In min qaryatin illa nahnu muhlikuha. We will completely destroy it. Muhlikuha, they will be destroyed. Qabla yawm al qiyamah, before the Day of Judgment. Aw mu'adhibuha, or we will severely punish it. Adaban shadida, with a severe punishment. That is written in our book. Allah says it is already written. It is inscribed. It's going to happen. You cannot divert this. Over there, Ba'san Shadid. And so th now you'll see how these two surahs are connected. These surahs have two subjects, Bani Israel and then the pagans. The Isra and Mera, Isra was taking to the Prophet of Jerusalem because to show him this is where the final battle will happen. But this battle is connected. It This battle, the battle, Ghazwatu Sham, you can say, is the last. But the one before that is in India, the, 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 Hanu, the Hanud and then Yahud. The Hind and then Yahud. And you can see the connection in the Quran itself. You don't need to go far. You can figure, you can see that in the Quran itself. Both from the first ayah, from the Isra wal Miraj, the Najam and Sutul Isra, and then within Sutul Isra, the two groups mentioned Bani Israel and then the pagans. So I hope this makes the matter clear to those people that have, at, and because I want to take it step by step. And people ask me questions and they want, you know, they ask me one sentence questions, but I'm thinking like, oh my God, this is going to take, I have to take some time to answer this. So I want to answer things properly and I want to do things as properly as Allah allows me to do them, inshallah ta'ala. So I wanted this to be there for you to see, to see, to understand. Otherwise, I really, really wanted to talk today about Kashmir and Palestine, what happened and how some of the other issues that are coming out. But inshallah, maybe I will do that tomorrow. أقول قول هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم إيد مبارك everyone and uh, pray for me inshallah I'm also praying for all of you make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم أشهد أن لا إله إلا